Because the resistance of the armature in a DC motor is very low, it's important to always install resistance in series with the armature before starting a shunt motor. If full line voltage were applied to a shunt motor that did not have resistance installed in series with the armature, the resulting high current flow could severely damage the armature. Once the motor is up to its operating speed, the series resistance can be disconnected or bypassed. Now, this is a schematic of a typical compound motor. Compound motors are the most commonly used type of DC motor, and they are also the most complex because a compound motor contains two types of fields, a series field and a shunt field. The field coil markings and armature markings in the schematic show that the series field is connected in series with the armature, and the shunt field is connected in parallel with the armature. So there are two current paths in this motor. Brushes make the electrical connection between the power source and the commutator in a DC motor. Brushes are usually made of carbon, and the size of a particular brush is determined by the amount of current it has to carry. Many of the problems that occur in DC motors originate in the brushes or in the brush rigging assembly. Two main causes of brush problems are wear and damage, both of which can be caused by improper adjustments. To do their job properly, the brushes must make full flat contact with the commutator at all times. This contact may not be possible if the brushes are hung up in the brush holders, if the brush pigtails bind on the brush holders, if the brush tensioning devices are set incorrectly, or if the brushes are too short. Full contact between the brushes and the commutator is also impossible if the brushes are broken, cracked, or chipped. When cracks or chips reduce the surface area of the brush, current has to flow through a smaller area. This may cause sparking or arcing between the brush and the commutator, and the brushes may heat up. The sparking may be minor, or it may be extreme, causing what looks like a ring of fire around the commutator. Sparking always indicates a problem in motor operation. Now here's an example of a good brush, one that's not worn or damaged. The surface of the brush is not chipped or cracked, and it is smooth and shiny. The shape of the brush conforms to the shape of the commutator, and the brush is not too short. This brush pigtail is also in good condition, and it's securely fastened to the brush. Now that we've examined some problems commonly associated with brushes, and we've seen what a good brush looks like, let's see what's involved in maintaining brushes and brush rigging. To begin, the power to the motor is shut off, and the motor is locked and tagged according to plant procedures. The motor in this example has been taken to a shop for maintenance. The first step in any motor maintenance procedure is cleaning the motor. The inspection doors are opened, and the interior of the motor is vacuumed to remove as much loose dirt and carbon dust as possible. After the vacuuming, an approved cleaning solvent and a brush are used to wipe out the interior. Whenever you use cleaning solvents, be sure to follow all applicable safety precautions, such as wearing the proper gloves to protect your hands. During the cleaning step, it's important to pay special attention to the brush holders, the brush tensioning devices, and the commutator. The brushes can be removed from their holders so that the inside of the holders can be cleaned. Cleaning the commutator also involves cleaning the area between the segments. Care must be taken to ensure that the brown coating on the segments is not removed. This coating aids current flow between the brushes and the commutator when the motor is operating. After the interior of the motor has been thoroughly cleaned, the next step is to inspect the brushes and the brush rigging. The brush rigging includes the brush holders and the brush tensioning devices. The surfaces of the brushes should be checked for damage and wear. A brush that is damaged or worn down to one-fourth of its original length should be replaced. The brush pigtail should be securely fastened to the brush. The pigtail should be flexible, and it should not be frayed or discolored. The inside surfaces of the brush holder should be checked to make sure that they're clean and smooth. 
any burrs or dings must be removed with a file or sandpaper. If they're not removed, a brush could get hung up on them and not make good contact with the commutator. The bottom edges of the brush holders should also be smooth, straight, and free of burrs. If they're not, the edges must be smoothed with a file or sandpaper, or the brush holders must be replaced. Most brush holders can be adjusted, so it's very important to make sure that they're positioned properly. Brush rigging may also need to be adjusted. The brush rigging is adjusted by loosening the brush holder bolts and then moving the holders so that the brushes cover as much area as possible. After the rigging has been adjusted properly, the brushes can be replaced if required. If new brushes are being installed, they must be the right type and grade for the motor as specified in the motor manufacturer's manual. The brushes must be properly seated in their rigging. In other words, the shape of the brush's bottom should fit the shape of the commutator. Your facility may have specific procedures for you to follow when you're seating new brushes in their rigging. If no procedures are specified, there are several that can be used. For example, one way is to seat brushes using extra fine flint paper to alter the shape of the brush. When this method is used, a strip of flint paper is torn off that is at least as wide as the brush. The strip of flint paper is then placed on the commutator with the flint side out. The brush is placed in the brush holder and the tensioning device is adjusted to hold the brush tightly against the flint paper. In this example, the motor's armature is then turned slowly back and forth a few times. The brush is then removed and inspected to see if it has the same shape as the surface of the commutator. If it doesn't, the procedure with the flint paper is repeated. When the shape of all of the brushes conform to the shape of the commutator, the seating procedure is complete. All traces of carbon dust must then be removed from the motor. The next step is to install the brushes. After they're placed in the brush holders, the brushes are moved up and down to make sure that they can move easily. The next step, if necessary, is to set the amount of tension applied by the brush tensioning devices. The tensioning devices in this example are set by the factory and are not adjusted. The purpose of a commutator in a DC motor is to provide the sliding connection points from the brushes to the current carrying conductors in the armature. A commutator in good condition has a smooth, highly polished surface. Commutators generate a film over their surface that aids the current flow from the brushes to the commutator. The color of this film ranges from a light brown to a chocolate brown when the commutator is in good condition. Care must be taken to avoid removing this film as the commutator is being cleaned. If the film is removed, commutator efficiency will decrease and the brushes may wear more rapidly. Many commutator problems are caused by problems with brushes. Commutator problems can be kept to a minimum by keeping the motor clean and by correcting brush problems as soon as possible. There are three general areas of a commutator that require thorough cleaning on a periodic basis. The three general areas of a commutator that require thorough cleaning on a periodic basis are the surface of the commutator, including the area between its segments, the bearing end of the commutator, and the area behind the risers. When the motor is running, the commutator surface can be cleaned with a canvas wiper or a commutator stone to remove dirt and other contaminants without removing the protective film. Before any other cleaning, though, the motor must be stopped and locked and tagged according to procedures. In this example, the motor is taken to a shop for further cleaning. Then the area between the commutator segments can be cleaned. This area is likely to collect dust, brush chips, copper flakes, and other particles. A good light makes it possible to check this area visually. The mica that is used to insulate the segments from one another ranges in color from light gray to white when it is clean. A soft brush and a vacuum hose are good tools to use to remove any particles between the segments. In addition, hand slotters or scrapers are tools specifically designed to remove excess mica and foreign particles and to smooth the edges of the commutator segments. 
the bearing end of the commutator and the area behind the risers should also be cleaned until all dirt and dust are removed. Now that we've looked at how a commutator can be cleaned, let's identify some problems that can occur in commutators. Typical problems include threading, grooving, copper drag, and flashover. In this part, We'll look at general procedures for troubleshooting a DC motor, and we'll see how to test for grounds, opens, and shorts. The motor to be checked should be de-energized, locked out, and tagged according to approved procedures. Troubleshooting a de-energized motor helps prevent personal injury and protects the motor and the test equipment from damage. The motor in this example has been taken to a shop for troubleshooting. First, it should be checked carefully for any obvious problems, such as broken wires, loose screws, short brushes, and charred insulation. The brushes and the brush rigging should also be checked. The armature and field windings are also checked. It's common practice to look for grounds, opens, and shorts. These are the problems that occur frequently in all types of electric motors and can prevent them from operating. A ground is a breakdown in insulation that provides a current path to ground where there should not be a path. An instrument commonly used to check for grounds is a meg-ohm meter. Meg-ohm meters are available in several designs. Some are powered by a hand crank generator, others are line powered, and others are battery powered. The one used in our example is battery powered. Before a meg ohm meter is used to test for grounds, it should be tested to make sure that it's operating properly. Begin by clipping the meter's two probes together and operating the meter. The meter should indicate zero resistance. Next, separate the probes and operate the meg ohm meter again. This time, it should indicate infinite resistance. The digital readout on this meg ohm meter indicates infinite resistance by displaying a blank readout except for the number 1, which appears all the way to the left. Finally, connect both probes to ground and operate the meter. This time, the meter should indicate zero resistance. If the meg ohm meter is operating properly, it can be used to test the de-energized motor. First, the motor's three leads are connected together. Then the meg ohm meter's ground lead is attached to a metal section of the motor, and the meter's line lead is connected to the motor leads. This arrangement provides a current path to ground if the motor is grounded. If the meter indicates